I think it's a great opportunity for the next Attorney General. Judge Blake ordered the parties to mediate. I mean, so she, she held, um, no, the HBCUs haven't been underfunded, but yes, uh, the program duplication is improper and uh, has, has harmed the HBCUs. And she ordered the parties to mediate. Um, that's, that is a, a great opportunity for the Attorney General. I mean, the Attorney General represents, well, I know that it's the uh, alumni and faculty that are the, the nominal plaintiffs, but in fact, it's the HBCUs that are on one side and the TW, the traditionally white institutions on the other. The Attorney General represents them all. And uh, it is an opportunity, I think, for the next Attorney General to bring people together, find common ground. This is not a case that should be, uh, this is not a, a problem that should be solved by litigation. It's a problem that should be solved um, within the University of Maryland system and, and with its, you know, uh, with Morgan uh, and, and the other semi-independent uh, institutions or independent institutions. And I don't, I mean, it, it's not easy, but it's, it, it is, I think, in everybody's interest to resolve this um, without having the judge issue an order uh, and you know go up and find out what the Court of Appeals thinks about it and then ultimately what the Supreme Court thinks about it because I'm not sure that the, the basis of uh, Judge Blake's decision, which is the Fordyce uh, decision, is going to be good law when you get up to the Roberts Supreme Court. So. Um, everybody has something to gain, everybody has something to lose in this mix. Uh, as Attorney General, I'd bring them together, try to find common ground. I think probably uh, money has to be on the table, duplication has to be on the table. Um, but I think it's possible, it's certainly, we're, these are parties that are rational, you know, when, when I'm in private, I got, Pardon me for this digression, but I, I was representing a son uh, a number of years ago uh, who wanted to sue his father over his grandfather's estate. And the lawyer who was representing the father was my father's contemporary. And we were trying to settle the cases and our, the case and our, our parties, our clients wanted to fight. And he pulled me aside and he said, Brian, you know, sometime you'll realize that when you're doing civil litigation, you're representing the lunatic fringe of society. And it's a true story. I think about every civil case that I have, there's some nutcase, somebody who won't give, some, I mean, the reason we're in court is because there's somebody who's acting irrationally. Here, we've got parties that have to act rationally. They represent the public, they represent, uh, they represent the students and, and faculty, and they have to act rationally. This is a situation where, uh, it ought to be solved without resort to litigation or further litigation. And that's, that's how I would, it, implicit in your question, question, Glenn, I guess, is, you know, so it, the, the state loses and it, and it goes up on appeal, what would I do? I don't know specifically the answer because I don't know what the, the court will decide, but somebody is going to be representing the state. It's not as if the attorney general can say, well, hmm, I'm, I, I don't agree with the, the, uh, um, the state's position, I'm not going to represent them, Some, and, and the case will then die, somebody is going to represent the state, if not the Attorney General, it will be private counsel. So the case doesn't go away if the Attorney General says I'm not going to participate. Um, and I think the cases in which the Attorney General should decline to represent the state are limited to constitutional, and, and this might be a situation where there are constitutional rights uh, in play. Uh, that the state is ignoring, violating, but I'm not, I, I don't, my gut tells me that's not, uh, that's not it, that it's going to be a grayer area.